Hi folks and welcome to Truck King. Today we're looking at this, the Land Rover Defender Outbound Edition. Now of course Land Rover is legendary for its four-wheel drive systems, but these days, yeah, this doesn't look like an old Land Rover. So we're gonna go out there, hit the road in our lovely Canadian winter and see if this thing can actually defend us from the ice. Let's start with what we have here today. So this is the Land Rover Defender Outbound Edition. What that means is it's the Defender 130. That's the longest version of this vehicle, but it only has five seats. It gets rid of the third row in favor of massive storage. And that's sort of what the name suggests. If you're outbound, going out and adventuring and you wanna bring a bunch of stuff with you, well, this is the Defender to get. Another feature that drives that point home, Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires. We've tested a bunch of Defenders here on the channel, and this is the first one that I've actually seen with a really aggressive set of all-terrains, and that's part of the Outbound Edition. So I appreciate, again, that nod towards, yeah, getting out there and actually adventuring. So today in this video, I want to focus on the four-wheel drive system. One of the reasons is we just reviewed a Defender. So if you want to see our thoughts on how it drives on-road, the pricing, the luxury, all that kind of stuff, go watch that video. Right now, we're gonna take advantage of what's going on outside. We have a very cold day, about minus nine degrees Celsius, but yesterday it was raining, so the roads are absolutely covered in ice. We're gonna go hit the ice and see how the four-wheel drive actually handles in the real world. I mentioned the space in the back. Well, let's look at it, because this is truly the reason why you'd buy one of these. And it is massive, just to illustrate, I'm leaning in, and I honestly can just touch that seat up there. This is a, uh, a ton of space. So yes, if cargo space is a priority, this is the one you wanna get. Now besides that, we also get a couple nice little features, like a 110 volt plug right there. You get a 12 volt plug right next to it as well. The other thing you'll notice is it's blacked out back here. So yeah, it is pretty dark. You don't get windows in the rear, but if you don't have passengers, that doesn't matter as much. Now one other neat feature at the rear end of the fenders is right over here. You can actually just drop the air suspension in the back or lift the air suspension up in the back. Why would you want to do that? Honestly, for this model, it's more important because you're loading heavy things into it and dropping the air suspension buys you a little bit of, uh, of height. So when you're lifting up, you just don't have to go that tall. On the flip side, I can also pump it up now, I'll be totally honest, I don't really see a situation where I'd want just the rear end lifted up this tall. The only one I could think of, maybe hooking up a trailer. You back in under your trailer, lift it up, and then the ball goes on. But that's quite a lift back here. So that's just another neat feature and a bit of a different way to utilize the uh, air suspension here on the Defender Outbound. Alrighty, folks, here we are in the Defender. So I just mentioned this, but I'll say it again because, again, the conditions are important today, right, Dad? Yesterday it was raining. It was above freezing, so everything got slushy and wet, and then suddenly it dropped to minus 10 quickly. So the road we're on right now, don't let the looks fool you. It is a sheet of ice, absolute ice. Tiny bit of snow on top of it, exactly. but underneath it's just it's just all ice. So what that's going to let us do is see again how the four-wheel drive system works in a slippery situation. Now we're going to on purpose sort of work it hard. So the thing I like to do is we come out here and we put our foot right to the floor, ask for full power because you know the tires are going to slip and you know that the traction control system is going to have to deal with it. So it allows us to see how the machine deals with it. So, uh, Dad, we're in auto mode right now, which, as the name suggests, it will automatically give you whatever it thinks you need. So I say uh, you put your foot to the floor and we simply see what happens in auto mode. I just want to point out that this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. Correct. All the time. Yes. So the only things that we're going to be able to do is change the various modes. And then the modes actually control whether it has lockers, etc so we'll do those one at a time so right now we are in the basically the everyday driving condition right 
Exactly. Okay. So, let's go. Right. Three, two, one. Oh, 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 getting sideways. Getting sideways. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, this can also be a little dangerous because it's seriously icy. So it actually delivered the power kind of quicker than I expected it to, and it didn't really try to get you back straight. It basically just kept you sideways, it felt like to me. Yeah, it's funny. It didn't really, I didn't get a lot of uh, correction. Seatbelt there, driver. Oh man, I love the dinging though. <laughs> oh, the dinging yeah, so good. we didn't get a lot of correction, and we also didn't get power cut. No, it felt like the power was rolling on. Like, considering how much we were slipping and sliding, yeah. I would have expected the power to get cut. I, I agree. Usually that's exactly what happens. This traction control kicks in and says, hey, we don't want you doing this, and it cuts your power right away. And yeah, that did not happen there. Yeah. So auto did okay, but it wasn't great. It wasn't as aggressive as I would have expected. Yeah, well, you can see from our track, so yeah, right, uh, right friggin' <laughs> sideways. Yeah, nice. Okay, well, we'll reconfigure, and we'll try the next one in snow mode. Yes, indeed. Alrighty, Dad, so pull back up. So I'm going to go ahead and switch you over here to grass, gravel, snow mode. Now this is interesting. It brings up the low traction launch screen, which is probably what we need today. So let's try it with low traction launch. And as the name suggests, it should allow us to take off very gradually. Now it, it asks you to gradually apply the pedal. I think we should kick it a little harder just to keep things kind of even and see how it deals with it. Yeah, well, but, I'm not going to let any vehicle tell me what to do. <laughs> but this is the setting that you would exactly want for today. So if you're ready, we can see what the difference is. Okay, let's see what it does. Here we go. There's the traction control. Yeah, it interrupted. Still pretty good amount of power that it rolls on, but it yeah. interrupted quickly, and it felt like it was trying to keep you way straighter there. But it did also say that that mode was only effective up to 30 kilometers an hour. Sure. So as soon as I got over 30, then it started. It just it just poured on the power without really uh, doing any kind of anything. Yeah, but, but as it suggested, and you know what? Maybe right now, just because we're going to come to another stop, do it as it says. Do a gradual takeoff and just see if it feels, you know, super controlled. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's try that. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? No wheel spin at all that I felt right there. Felt absolutely just solid. No, that was much better. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as the system suggests, if you do take off gradually, it does a nice job. It takes care of you. And... Uh, and that's interesting, Dad. I, I think we've kind of proven the point that the systems are important. You know, it's snowing outside. Put it in snow mode. Okay, so we will do one more. We now have it in mud and ruts mode. And as you can see, it's telling us that our center differential and that rear differential are now locked. And they're going to be locked before we took off. Before we take off, I should say. Because before, they weren't locked. And then we took off and then it locked it. So let's see. Yeah, in, uh, in sand and... What is it? Sand and rock mode? Mud and ruts uh, mode. Mud and ruts. <laughs> Too many mud modes. And ruts. Let's see in mud and ruts if the lockers make a big difference. Okay. Good to go when you are. Okay. And here we go. <laughs> not not a difference with the traction control. Well, no, it, it's okay. See, yeah, okay, so it's locked up, so everything's spinning. Yeah, you could feel four wheel spin. But the traction control, and, and I guess in mud, you actually do want your wheels to be spinning. So it's trying yeah, to which is fine. Speed. But it's interesting to see it, feel it on the ice. So you know, so honestly, the snow mode makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because it's recognizing that everything is slippery, and the whole idea here is to get moving with the least amount of spin possible, Precisely. because that'll also give you the best possible steering and control. Yeah. Um, if you just want to kind of get out here and, you know, fishtail and do donuts, well, then this works real good, though. Sure. So I think the interesting thing here, Dad, and part of this discussion is just the fact that these days with your modern Land Rover, yeah, you're not going, you know, four high traction control off. You're just going snow mode. And then it'll deal with that stuff. It'll deal with the lockers. You don't get access to those lockers. You simply put it in the mode, and it will lock up when it seems appropriate. So. An, a layer of control has been taken away from us, but on the flip side, it's also been made simpler because it's snowing, put it in snow and don't think about it. So, yeah. And I think that's the customer this is catering to. Honestly, frankly. and I think in some ways it makes total sense, and I'll tell you why. Because um, 
we have a tendency in the old school when it comes to lockers, four high, traction control, to use those things after we've already had a bad experience. Sure, after you're in other, in other words, when you're already in the ditch and or you just spun out, you go, oh, geez, maybe I should have had those on, eh? Fair enough. Yeah, so that's it. Now, you know, it should be able to put them on for you, hopefully before you get in trouble, especially if you got it in one of the modes. Exactly. All right, Dad, well, we definitely felt sort of on road how the different drive modes respond. And, you know, that's especially important. We all know that the majority of these defenders will live on road most of the time. So you want to feel like you have a sure footed vehicle. And uh, yeah, I would say you do. And I would say you do with the, the least amount of thinking possible. Put it in snow and go. Uh, but we also wanted to go off-road, right? So we came over here to our local Hydroline trail and nothing too technical, but once again today it's snowing like heck and everything's got a, a frozen layer of ice underneath of it. So Dad, you were doing most of the driving there. Why don't you talk to me about uh, yeah, just the power and what the whole thing felt like. The straight six in this has really decent power. Yeah. Put your foot in it and it will jump. Comes on when you need it to. The best feature the Land Rover offers is the adjustable air suspension. Mm. Because, you know, having that ride height is, is just so great. Because, yeah, you get off-road, it's not a poser by any stretch. Because it's got the chops as far as having the drive modes and the lockers. But as we all know, those are useless if you don't have clearance. Right, and if you're stuck is, on an obstacle. Yeah, yeah and that matter. is a problem with a lot of vehicles that we've tested here and there, which is, yeah, they've got the gear, but they don't have the clearance, and you're into those problems with air dams and fascias, um, parch, uh, approach and departure. Right. But with this thing, man, you crank it up, it lifts. I mean, it lifts a lot. What yeah. do you figure? Yeah, six it's, inches? Yeah, it's. I would say it's somewhere between maybe four and six, but it, it feels significant, no doubt. Yeah, enough so that you're at the top of that range, and with these tires, which are quite aggressive, Yeah. It was, it was fun. I was having a blast. <laughs> yeah, it did look fun as well. I think the one downside you can say on the air suspension is when you do get it pumped up, it gets a little stiffer, but more so than that, it does have a tendency to kind of want to buck off of obstacles because you're kind of using all your travel to bring it up. So it, it has a bit of a different feel inside, but that's not really that big a deal when you consider the amount of you know capability you're getting from that lift. No, exactly. And the reality is too, is, is you can see on the video, we did some high speed runs. It actually handled the higher speed stuff really well. And then, and then we, we can't, you know, fail to mention the fact that we just pulled off of the trail back on road and, and it's a comfortable, quiet, beautiful little luxury SUV. Yeah, you, you know? dump you dump the bags and you're back down into a normal position. It's got all the arrow that you would want. And uh, so, you know, I think I'll say it again. Um, there's some vehicles out there that, that make me cringe because I consider them to be poser vehicles, but this isn't one of them. Yep, I absolutely agree. It, it moved in that direction with this generation, meaning it got rid of its axles, it got rid of its frame. So everyone was like, oh my gosh, no more body on frame. It's going to be horrible. Yeah. I don't see it, man. I, I think it's probably just as capable as a last gen Defender, honestly. Yeah, and, and to that, I will simply say that as much as I like the old Defender, I also recognize that um, as with Jeeps of, uh, well, today, if you want good off-road capability, they beat the hell out of you on-road. There's, well, there's a trade-off. That's where they've gotten rid of that. Yep. So, Defender versus uh, Canadian Winter. Defender is going to take care of you really well. This is definitely a vehicle for living in a place like this. I'd feel great about it. But not as not all is perfect in Defender land. There's a couple things we've noticed that is, are really bugging us. For me, the biggest thing here is the payload number, 825 pounds. This is the outbound edition. This is the one you're supposed to take kayaking, camping, hiking, rock climbing. All of those things come along with gear and usually friends. So, I mean, at 800 pounds, right, four 200-pound guys and you're done. You've maxed out your payload. Now, 
I will also say, if you go over that number, it's probably not that big a deal, but I can't, you know, recommend that. You have to pay attention to the payload number. And uh, yeah, Dad, I just wish, if you're gonna sell me on this outbound adventure machine, we should have a thousand pounds. I really feel like it's just lacking in that department. No, I'd have to absolutely agree with that. And then past that, there's a few other things control-wise. Uh, first off, remembering, of course, that this vehicle is sold as a left-hand drive or a right-hand drive. So there are certain controls up here, particularly in the center stack, that they're exactly the same, whether you're in left-hand drive or right-hand drive. So being that I've got a left-hand drive, my volume knob is just about way the hell over here. <laughs> Uh, in front of Steven and right. you know it's great if the steering wheel was over there but little weirdnesses like that and then the other thing of course is the shifter shifter that I hate because it does not conform to the normal PRNDL you have to push the P to get it to go into park if you just shove that shifter up you're ending up in reverse and like it happened to me yesterday I had the door halfway open before things started to roll backwards and I went oh yeah that's right yeah yeah I this is another one I agree with you on it's the uh, same thing that General Motors has done with a lot of their pickup trucks and it drives me crazy there too and I'll, I'll look at this from both angles some people have said that if you owned this you'd get used to it. And I'm not gonna argue that point. We're in and out of vehicles all week, every week, something new. So we don't have the chance to sort of get the muscle memory to get used to it. But an integral safety feature of the vehicle is the shifter. And it's been the same since forever. Just why mess with it? The only reason I can see is fashion. People sitting around a boardroom and thinking, we need some cool fancy shifter. Yeah, there's there's no different. other practical reason that I can come up with for why the shifters have to be changing. And again, this is not just Land Rover, it's across the industry. The new Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Ioniq 6, those shifters drive me crazy too. It's one area where I think that they are, they are innovating for innovation's sake and there's no reason for it. So says him, so I agree. Well, folks, I do think we have come to the end of this video. Now, the last thing I do have to spit out, of course, is the price. Here in Canada, the Defender 130 Outbound, as you see it in this video, is $112,000. So once again, it's uh, very capable and very luxurious, but you are gonna pay for that. Overall though, Dad, I think the Defender, you know what, it has a couple of competitors. I would say a G-Wagon is probably the main one, maybe the big Lexus LX, but mostly this thing does exist in its own category because it provides that luxury and that off-road goodness. Plus it just has all the kind of British weirdness which some people absolutely love. So if you want something that's totally unique, the Defender's here for you. And that's all I've got. So I think that's the end of this one. Why don't you folks uh, go below now, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of the Defender and everything you've seen in this video. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya. Thanks, folks.